Welcome to the eMobility Summit 2023 right here in the cloud in Auckland. This is where we're looking at what's happening in the sphere of electric vehicles and charging and how we provide the electricity to charge those vehicles. Let's go have a look what's on display. As well as back-to-back -back guest speakers, this year's eMobility Summit had a fair amount of toys on display. Everything from Hayden Patton's electric Hyundai rally car, which has broken records, to various types of charging systems, including these ones with large battery packs built in, perfect for places where the grid can't handle heavy loads, all the way to trucks like this Scania Big Rig with a 300 kilowatt hour battery, allowing this beast to replace combustion for most applications on one single charge. There was some awesome tech on display, so I annoyed a few stall holders to see what they were offering. I'm going to start here at this stall. This is Gordon from LP INZ. What do you guys actually do here? Yeah, we uh, generally we provide power protection systems uh, and power quality systems, but uh, in the last five years uh, we also started business in EV charging, so I can we provide see that provide EV chargers. This uh, is an impressive to, looking beast. Yeah. What's, uh, what power rating is it? So this one is 150 kilowatts. So we can go up to 400 kilowatts in this range. So smaller units, this can be anything from the domestic market up to the parking and industrial areas in front of the companies and so on. Gotcha. So this one comes also with a free app so you can connect it and it will notify you when the charge is, uh, when your car is almost full. And then we move oh God, this to is a type two on 20, each side. 22 kilowatt on each side. Okay. So some other manufacturers would call it 22 kilowatt, but it will be only half on each side. We also have a see this one 25 here. kilowatt DC charger. This is quite popular model these days because people are, as obviously EV, char EV cars are raising more in popularity, more okay. people want to use the fast charging. With the amount of EVs and EVs that we see here, business must be booming now, surely. Well, we're not complaining at this stage. <laughs> That's uh, a good but, problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, we, we find uh, that we differentiate maybe from other suppliers that we can offer the full turnkey solution and we're not uh, just box movers. So gotcha. we start the project first with analyzing what's the power quality of the particular client and how much spare power do they have what size uh, charger can you install uh, based on your power availability and quite often during that process we also find some anomalies in the power systems as well like for example the customer's got bad power factor or they have a harmonics in the system all right i see you guys also do uh, mobile charging stations and that is interesting and where would you use it well interesting question is uh actually we uh, had a question from uh, just last week from one of the bigger electrical contractors that are on construction site and they have a number of EV vehicles. Good for diggers yeah. down there. There's a little uh, excavator down there. I'm going to go have a look at that in a second. And this is the excavator I was just talking about. This is Louis from e -Trucks. Louis, what is this thing? Yeah, so this is a great three and a half ton excavator. Uh, it's got a 70 kilowatt battery in it. 70 kilowatt hours? 7 kilowatt, yeah. How many hours can that run? So it depends on that. Uh, so you, you get a run time of about 6 to 8 hours. That's a uh, full day, because they've got a break day. in the middle, right? Correct, yes. Okay. But yeah. you can actually charge this as well. What, how long does it take to charge? So if it depends on what kind of uh, charger you put on, but we can, we can charge it under an hour, you know. Uh, under one hour? Yep. So, yeah, if you can, if you put a 90 kilowatt, it will be about 40 minutes to this your full amazing. charge. So. You just need a, a, a lunch break, you know, and you're back and you can get your 10 hours of work in it. What sort of loader capacity does this have? So a loader capacity, it's got a, a one cubic meter bucket with uh, 22 kilowatts of power uh, in it. So it's all instant power, okay. you know, so... Oh, so you've got all that electric motor torque as yes, well. Yes, and it's all direct, so yeah, so there's a, no lot, there's a lot of fun. No and lack yeah. of noise. Oh, what's there not to like? I love so, it. So we've, we've just, uh, we had one of the, the excavator um, drivers from Isaac in it uh, the other day at a show, and he was just all smiles, you know, he oh, can't yeah. wait to play got, with it. I got to use one yesterday, Yeah, and, and I was just grinning ear to ear it yes. was brilliant fun so they say if you can play a playstation or a, a xbox you'll have a lot of fun in oh, this i believe it next on the list is richard from power trip what do you guys do uh, so we use geospatial data um, and charging station data and vehicle telematics data uh, to basically help fleets get into electric vehicles faster um, and then also help them manage them better once they're in there uh, we can use like tracking devices in the cars you know telematics to actually look at the historical driving um, and look at what life would have looked like had the entire fleet been um, electric, for example. Um, okay. And then we can use planning services to actually predict, right, you're going on this trip, 
where do you have to charge, how much do you have to charge up, um, and what does that look like, just to give people certainty before they leave. Um, and like here, for example, we can show what the estimated fuel cost is based on like data from um, ECA's database, what the emissions would be, um, and then whether or not most of those fuel costs could be saved over short range trips, medium range or long range, um, and then what that starts to look like in terms of actually feasibility. So, you know, um, how many days uh, is the vehicle in use versus not in use, um, how much of its trips could have been achieved with overnight charging only versus how many trips would have needed one extra charge during the day. So your normal approach would be um, like, can this vehicle be charged up overnight uh, and can it do all its driving on a single day? So it's uncertainty that's just stopping the fleet going electric. Yeah, or you just go straight into buying vehicles without the charging stations Whoops. and then you're like, well, what happens now? Where do we put them? Um, and you could put them at the office, but then what if everyone takes the cars home at night? Gotcha. You could put them at people's houses, but what if they actually you know, spend most, like that's a pool car? Okay. So there's all those kind of questions and this is designed to just give you the answers based on um, what you're currently doing. One of the fleets we worked with, uh, they were stuck at 4% in their fleet because they'd adopted that pattern. But now using this, they're at 33% and well on track to get to 100. That's fantastic. Yeah. That is a bit well done. Thank you. Next up, this is Jesus from Wallbox. What do you guys got on offer here? So we are a brand of retires that we have been working with Transnet for the last five years in, in New Zealand. And we basically brought the latest EV charging technologies that we, we have developed. So including some of them like yeah. uh, What's our this? supercharger. This looks interesting. So this is Supernova, our latest DC charger. Okay. So what you're seeing right now is a 60 kilovolt version, but we have up to 150. And what is interesting about this charger is that it gives the same platform. So you can expect it to be the same size for okay. 150. That's pretty, pretty tight for a DC charger. That is, for 150 kilowatts, this is a fairly slim unit. Because you yeah, see some of them around here, the one just around the corner. Yeah. It's, it's pregnant yeah, with twins, bulky, yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> bulky and, well, it's, it, it uses six power models and each one of them is independent. So if one is down, the other ones are going to keep working okay. and they can be, they can be switched. Oh, so you can, you can charge two vehicles at once? Or uh, it is. It is so this one specifically is also a split charge. So okay. two vehicles at the same time or just one if you want to prioritize it. Uh, so this is also the latest AC charger that we have okay. called Pulsar Pro. This one basically brings certain technologies that um, there's a more technology is about regulation. Latest regulation that we have seen in the UK, in Europe, that is slightly getting more uh, important in this part of the world. As for example, in, in terms of cyber security, it brings something called anti tampering. So oh, okay. if someone opens your charger, you get a notification telling you that oh, okay. Okay, uh, okay. someone has been opening. Now that there are more EVs in the market, uh, it's not just about the charger but also about all the technology that goes around it. And this is where Transnet is basically a big part of Wallbox in New Zealand. Gotcha. And so, for example, have here some trays that they have developed to, they call it EV-ready trays. And it comes prepared for whenever you need to to put more chargers. Okay. Oh, see, so, okay. So you guys are not just doing the chargers, but also the, uh, the grid related stuff. Yeah, so this is, this is where Transnet is, is basically um, a very valuable partner for Wallbox in, in New Zealand, and basically it's Wallbox in New Zealand, um, okay, because they had developed this whole ecosystem, and it's made in New Zealand, right. uh, this whole ecosystem of uh, com complements yep. to Wallbox chargers that makes the, everything easier and, and upgradable. This year's Electro Summit had some great clean tech on display, including electric off-road bikes, as well as huge discussions on stage. But as always, it's the gadgets that draw me in. So I'm very much looking forward to an even bigger event in 2024.